Hey guys, it's me, Whistler's brother! <laughs> uh, I'm doing my whistling tutorial number three. Uh, if you don't know how to whistle at all, can't get a sound out, this isn't the video for you. What you want to do is click on the link that's right up there. And that one uh, should help you. Anyway, uh, this is for people who already know how to whistle. I'm going to be covering a few basic things to help you get more musical with your whistling. And the main things I'm covering are pitch and tempo. Okay, <clears throat> now, you probably already know this from my other video, but uh, uh, in order to vary your pitch, uh, there's a couple things that you're going to need to do. One of them is changing the size of your pucker, perhaps. Even more importantly, the more I thought about this after I did that first tutorial, the most important thing is the amount of airspace in your mouth is going to change uh, the, the pitch. So watch as I go from a low note to a higher note. Watch my jawline. Not necessarily the muscles down here, but watch the jawline, okay? When I'm doing a low note, my jaw is wider. It's open more. And when I'm doing a higher note, it's closed a little more. So by varying the amount of airspace inside your mouth, and you can do this with a combination of your jaw and your tongue, you can, um, you know, you can change the pitch of your whistle. Now, as far as, uh, you know, working on musicality, it's very hard to get pitch just right. And so it takes practice. Uh, there's a tune that I used to practice. I don't really do much anymore, but um, there's a tune that I used to practice when I was working hard on trying to get better with my pitch with whistling. And uh, I think the name of it is The Thunderer. It's more commonly known as like the circus song, but it's by John Philip Sousa and it goes... Something like that. Um, I'm probably going to listen back to this and I wasn't hitting exactly the pitches I'm supposed to, but um, anyway, that's a really good one because it does have steps. Any song you like, though, uh, you can work on whatever you like and uh, to improve your pitch. Uh, really important to record yourself and listen back to it. It doesn't have to be video, but uh, record yourself, listen back to it. This goes for vocalists as well. Um, you're going to hear things on playback that you didn't hear the first time when you were actually doing the, the music and so it's a great tool to get better. You can listen to it and go, oh man, I was a little off on that note. <clears throat> okay, now here's something very important as well. You always want to challenge yourself. You always want to try to do things you can't quite do yet um, and in doing that as well, the reason pitch and tempo kind of go hand in hand is because the faster you're trying to go, the more of a tendency that you're not going to be hitting the correct pitch. So if you're having trouble with a piece you're working on, slow it down. Until you can hit those pitches perfectly that you're supposed to be hitting. And then you can speed it up a little bit more. And, uh, you know, go back to challenging yourself a little more. So that's, that's kind of a useful tool there. Uh, I do recommend you challenge yourself, though. Whistle along to music that you like. Uh, and especially if you record it, you're going to think you're doing great and then you hear it. I do this a lot. I listen to myself whistling back and I go, ah, man, I thought it came out so good. And then I find all these errors in there and I'm not hitting the pitches exactly. And then I got to redo it. But, um, you know, so again, though, it's something that just takes practice. Uh, you know, if you're having trouble with a piece, slow it down a notch until you get it. And then you can speed it up a little bit more and then a little bit more and so on. Now, with tempo, when working on tempo, especially if you have a fast passage in a piece, you might find that you speed up because you're kind of like panicking or hurrying in that, pe in that part of the piece. Um, it's great to have a metronome. I don't actually own one. I'm borrowing this one from a friend at the moment, but uh, this is what one looks like. And it's a device to help you keep perfect time. Um, I'm going to put a link in the video description to a website you can go to that will actually generate a steady beat for you. Uh, I forget the name of the website. is Metronome something. But anyway, um, you don't have to own a metronome. They're very inexpensive to get at a music store, but you can, uh, you can just go to this website. The link is in the description, and uh, you can set the different tempo. You can go slow. You can go faster, whatever. 
and uh, it'll actually generate a beat for you. I highly recommend if you're recording your whistling because you're actually creating a, a piece that you want to you know, share with the world on YouTube if you happen to be completely insane like me, uh, <laughs> then um, I highly recommend you put on headphones and have a metronome going while you're doing it because uh, you'll be surprised. You think you have, you're keeping perfect time and then it turns out that you weren't uh, when you listen back to it. Metronome is a great way to get better at keeping a steady tempo and a steady beat. Other than that, um, you know, the only other tip I have for you is when you're practicing, do challenge yourself. But when you're trying to impress, let's say um, you're trying to impress the girl down the street with your whistling or something like that. And by the way, guys, don't be doing the wolf whistle. Girls hate that. They absolutely think it's just degrading and demeaning, most of them. Um, but, um, you know, chicks, if you're just whistling musically, chicks dig the whistling, so. <laughs> uh, actually, they, they really don't. But uh, anyway, whatever. I'm getting off track here. Okay, if you, <laughs> if you want to impress, or if let's say you're in a performance setting or whatever, you're trying to sound your best, um, you don't want to challenge yourself at that moment. You want to stick with what you know you can do. Stay within your limits, okay? For example, let's say, let's say I was doing uh, the piccolo solo from Stars and Stripes Forever, also by John Philip Sousa. Okay, uh, sounded okay, but uh, it wasn't perfect. So I'm gonna not do that in that high of a register or maybe not that fast. So for that particular piece, if I was trying to impress, I would take it down a notch. I'd take my pitch down to uh, in a lower register where it sounds better. And I can tell just hearing that when I listen back to it that the pitches weren't exact there either. Maybe I wouldn't use that tune to impress at all. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe I need some more work on that one. But uh, again, you know, uh, with whistling, just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're having fun. Practice is great. Pushing yourself, challenging yourself, trying to perfect your art is all well and good. But in the end, if it's not fun, you're not doing it right. <clears throat> Whistling is fun. It's joyous. It's something that... Ah, I, I can't even put it into words. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, again, have fun with it, guys. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Feel free to leave me uh, comments on this video if you need help with anything in particular. And keep on whistling. This is Whistler's Brother. <laughs> Signing off. And if you're still listening to this and watching this, you are completely crazy out of your mind. All right. Peace.